Well, let's take you back out to Florida again with that live look. The camera shaking. This is as Hurricane Ian is making its way through the Sunshine State right now. And Kia and TV4 Chief Meteorologist Pete Caggiano has joined us again live from Florida. Pete, how is it looking out there now? Yeah, thanks, Mika and Marissa. It's uh, looking, uh, well, looking a little bit rainy out here. That's the biggest concern. We're having the winds. They're picking up. We had a wind gust just down the road in Daytona Beach at 53 miles per hour. I'm located in Flagler County, which is about 30 miles north of Daytona Beach. It's a place called Palm Coast. The storm is heading our way, so it made landfall about six hours ago near Fort Myers, and it's expected to move our way overnight and into tomorrow. We're, of course, tracking that storm with our uh, KITV website. You can do this at home as well. The radar is available to you. You can see the storm making its way up now into central Florida, eventually where we're at into northeast Florida. It'll be heading our way. And while we're expecting winds to be heading our way right now, rain is the main issue. Let's go ahead and take you outside and we can show you. Uh, the rain continues to come down. We have these squalls that roll in. We've got one moving in right now. When those squalls come in, the winds pick up, the rain comes down, and we see some heavy rain. I want to show you this ditch right now. We've had about an inch or two of rain, but in this ditch, we've already got about a foot, foot and a half of rain, and we're anticipating another 18 inches of rain overnight into tomorrow. So rain's going to be the biggest threat, but of course, we have a, a threat for winds. Winds of 65 miles per hour expected tomorrow, gusts up to 80 and we will have the potential for tornadoes as well. But even that being said, nothing like what they saw at near Fort Myers landfall earlier today with those winds of 155 miles per hour. Still a foot and a half, two feet of rain is a lot. What about your, your parents' neighbors? Did they evacuate? What, what's the scene like there? Um, so we're not in an evacuation zone and they actually tell you not to evacuate if you're not in an evacuation zone uh, with this many people in the state of Florida, if everybody gets on the roads and if folks evacuate that are not told to evacuate, it actually causes a bigger problem. They get stuck out on the, uh, the highways and the freeways. So everyone is basically just kind of hunkering down in place. The only ones that are, are told to evacuate are the folks that are threatened by the storm surge. And that was mainly down in southwest Florida around uh, Gorda around Fort Myers area. And Pete, since you are hunkering down at home, you know, you're staying there. Talk about the preparations that you and your family took to make sure that you and your home stay safe. Well, of course, the most important thing, we, uh, we got water. So that was the most important thing is everybody in Hawaii is familiar with. Um, if you go to the grocery store, just like our stores back in Hawaii, you can't find any water. So that was an important thing to do. Um, we did not board up most of our windows. We did board up a couple of areas that were just strategic areas that we could kind of uh, could hide in if, if need be. Some folks have boarded up their whole uh, homes. My, my brother lives right next door. He boarded up his home. A lot of folks still haven't, but uh, that's, that's the main preparations. Of course, we've got our generator fueled and ready, and we've got a lot of food, and we're just uh, we're in it for the long haul. And then also, I mean, even once the storm passes, then it's still going to be, you know, days or even weeks or even months of recovery efforts, right? That, that's correct. Uh, the, uh, the issue is that this is going to affect almost the whole state of Florida from the south to the north. So what tends to happen with these storms is the power crews can only go to so many places so they go to the big cities first and if you live in a rural spot this is something that we need to understand in hawaii as well that if you live in a rural location your power could be out for weeks and uh, i was in a storm back here in florida uh about a decade ago and, and we lost power for at least a week and some folks lost power for two to three weeks so it's going to be a big job uh to uh fix that power grid and Pete, one more question. You mentioned earlier um, that the threat of tornadoes is actually something that you're worried about as well. Um, so how do you prepare for that? And, and how realistic is it that you could see a tornado pass through? Uh, it, it's pretty realistic. Uh, these storms tend to have a lot of spin in the atmosphere. So we have very quick developing tornadoes. They move at the speed of the winds. So you can have a tornado move at 60, 70 miles per hour. 
They're very hard to predict. As a meteorologist, they are very difficult to see on the radar because a normal tornado usually have calmer winds uh, near it, and, or at least uh, east and west of it. But with these, within within a hurricane, you already have 70, 80, 90 mile per hour winds, and then you have the tornado spinning in it. It's very hard to actually spot that in Doppler radar. So it is a big danger. We are expecting a tornado watch to be in effect later tonight. Well, of all times for him to end up going on vacation <laughs> to Florida, but we really do appreciate you taking time you know, to join us to tell us what's going on in Florida. And we hope that your family, you and your family, stay yeah. safe. Stay safe out there, Pete. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Well, an experimental drug is showing signs of slowing early-stage Alzheimer's. That's right. Still ahead, we'll tell you why health experts are 